My steering wheel project was a fail. I had a couple of these. They're just blocks of, of aluminum for bearing retainers for heavy equipment. Uh, they had steel, you can see a bolt broken off in there and the bearing retainer bro bolt broken off there. Anyway, with some hogging and some some screwing around on the lathe that's after I cleaned up so I could do the finish work I just decided to order an aftermarket steering wheel and I made this so the issue is finding an aftermarket steering wheel for many new cars is number one to get this diameter for in this case it's four and a half and that's relatively common four is probably the most common the second thing is that this doggone clock spring so the blinker cancel is as this square block rotates within that clock spring there, it allows the blinker cancel, the steering wheel's locked, but that doesn't matter. You get the picture. And then this is the cruise control, and this is the horn. So what I did is I cut this off of the steering wheel. I just cut it off and then chucked the, the backside of the lathe and then made it round. Okay? Mostly round. <laughs> and so I stepped. You can see that inside step. That registers this, that inside step registers this. The outside step allows it to go around the clock spring because the clock spring sticks out just a little bit. And then so, put the reliefs in it for the holes. And what I will do now, I actually ordered a, a tilt, um, that mounts on here there are three or 3.1 inch 70 millimeter something like that 70 or 74 millimeter and um the six bolt pattern so the wheel could go right on here but the factory wheel was a four and three quarter no four and a half back spacing the new wheel i ordered was two and three quarter and so that left me with one and three quarter or two inches, you know, I wouldn't mind a little more. I don't like to get too far away from the blinker. But, I mean, in this case, if I put a flat wheel on, I'd be hitting the blinker. The The steering wheel would hit the blinker. But, so the, the so I ordered the, uh, it's two inches deep. And then with my steering wheel, it might put my blinker back a little bit behind the steering wheel you know if my steering wheels out here I might not just be able to click it with my finger but I'm trying to get a little little bit of rearward movement if I don't use it no big deal it's a six bolt pattern for the steering wheel it mounts between the steering wheel and the and the steering wheel mount for that tilt um, flip up option to get you out in this car you're gonna be sitting about on the floor so anyway it was a fun project, got that milled out, and um, the other deal was a fail. This was the end result, it turned out, but the, the dimensions went all over the place. So it wound up being more work than it's worth to sit here and try to fill it with fiberglass, sand it down, and try to find, a, find the dimensions. So no harm, no foul. Uh, the best way to to do that uh, that I that I can uh, think of is is to go back and build it up with wood, uh, make a plug, then make a mold, then make the piece in, make the exterior of the piece in the mold. But I like this. That's going to work out really slick. So, project for the day. 
All right, guys. Continuing on with the uh, with the build, I've opted to go for um, a mount. So this will be bonded to the first. I'll I'll panel bond it up to the fender. Okay, and and that'll hold it and and keep it in place while I'm you know, doing all my fab. And then when that fender comes off, I'll glass it in. Okay, and basically what I did was I threaded. This is a piece of, of uh, 11 gauge, and or 10 gauge, pardon me, this is 10 gauge. I built them in pairs, again, built them together, um, drilled, identified my drill holes on the center with the, with these kept them clamped and then uh, uh, threaded the works together you know uh, sandwiched together cleaned them up and then ran a bolt we know you know a common bolt a common grade eight anyway has one inch of thread so I threaded that through all the way to bottoming the thread and then put on these weld nuts on the top side, tack them on, or threaded these on too. Got them relatively tight, tried to achieve a little interference, tack welded these on, and then went and cut a, um, you can see the weld right there, cut a channel deep deep into the bolt, but about three widths of, of a 40 thou, about 120 thou um, wide, and then I just welded each side I find if, and then ground all the mill not all the mill scale but ground as much mill scale off as I can I can take it over to my drum sander and finish it but the whole point is I want it scarified um, uh, for bonding then I went to each of these I haven't cleaned up the holes yet and opened the holes up to 3 8 these are 5 16 but they're threaded all the way through and that major diameter on the well nut that step there is three eighths. So then this will go on to there. Two washers. These are temporary because I think I'm going to use a fender washer, you know, inch and a quarter. This is an inch and a half on the inside, but probably an inch and a quarter fender washer. Now I'm hitting. There we go. And then I thread the nuts on. Here's the other side. So we've got a bit of a light gap. So I can get a, at least a couple of layers uh, underneath here of fiberglass, probably about three layers actually, of fiberglass. I can sand it uh, down to the uh, surface of the, of the uh, weld nuts. And um, I think you can get it from there and then mount the fender on. Obviously with 3 8 holes and zero clearance on the holes, you know, not zero, but minimal clearance on the holes. So you can see right there, you know, adjustability is out the window. But I will fab everything and get everything in position, in ideal position on both sides. And then when I pull the fenders off to glass these in, it may be necessary to slot these or simply just open the holes up so that there is some degree of adjustment uh, in the fenders. But I'm not going to do that for my, for my setup because, um, or my fabrication because I want an ideal location. I want an ideal location. So... So clearly it's a fiberglass fender and it's hanging out there and it's bolted on and twisting the frame and stuff or twisting the what the front end if there's twist along the front of the frame which the frame is very rigid but I mean if there is that fender will allow for some of that movement just like sheet metal would on a car but in this case um, I start with you know it's close to zero uh, to uh, tolerance and then I'll move from there. But yeah, it, it's not wise to go tight um, when you're doing a, 
final assembly. So I'll start here because I'm going to drive the car, right? If it was a show car, yeah, you know, everything's perfect. But because I'm going to drive the car, I'll open those up at a later time, but not now. Right now is setup, mock up, and fabrication. There's where I'm at. All right. Oh, status. So I got the studs in, drilled four holes. I am going to rivet. I'm going to use four 3 16 rivets. I'm going to put a flat washer on the top side. I'll just plunge a little with a spade bit to get this underneath underneath the surface, you know, a, a fair amount. The fiberglass is roughly a quarter of an inch thick. <clears throat> On the fender, that's from the apron portion that I pulled off. You know, and I can I think I can safely assume that the um that they laid it up, you know, laid it up rel relatively consistently. This has all been sanded. I took my uh, some 36 grit and I roughed the bottom side. Car is level. I leveled the running board, squared it all out, and then I applied panel bond to the bottom side. Okay, you can see it up in there. Again, remember that that is screwed to this. And then I just tacked it in on each one. Again, this will this will get cut flush and you know made beautiful, as will this. Um, I'm gonna let this cure, and um, I'll get the other side started for mock up. But I'm not gonna touch a doggone thing on this side. I quickly fashioned up a couple of clamps too. I ran to save big money and and bought two four foot sections of eighth inch and and strapped straddled the sides of cut my clamps and straddled the sides. I, nothing in town, so I quick made some up. <laughs> yeah, they work really good. I mean, they're not high strength, that's for sure, because those are cheap uh, clamps, C clamps, but uh, but they do the job. They squish that epoxy in. Um, and and they work so so now all that's mocked up and now the issue is to start on uh this side and get him get him going so um that's where i'm at and we'll keep on going after i finish a, a barley pop hey guys just wanted to do a quick recap on my bonding from yesterday this is the product I got, uh, 3M08115 panel bonding adhesive. It's an adhesive used for the replacement of automotive quarter panels, so on and so forth. I used it in bonding the roof skin on, on this, and I had some left. And it, it, it bonds very well. <clears throat> and so on this side now, I had everything mocked up, and now... This is in. Okay, and on the bottom you can see the remnants of the rivets. Where the barrel extended beyond the head of the nail, I ground down to the nail. And that's the reason for this standoff again. Remember, I stood this off to give a little bit of clearance between there. And so now I took my straight edge and laid it across these two. And yes, these all these all clear. So there's a view of the uh, rivet nuts. Uh, sunk into the frame and again I used a step drill and it provided I just let it step just a little bit on the next size bigger and it pulls these in near flush I didn't need them to be perfectly flush you know it's good if they are because it spreads that load across the whole flame frame but they they came in they're not even shit a 30 second to this one I, I can catch my fingernail on this one I can't this one is Flush, this one is flush, this one is, I can catch my fingernail on. So, but they're very, very, very close to the surface. They turned out really good. And um, now when I, that flange mounts on, it's good and, good and tight. 
this is on and then you saw the bottom of the rivets so what I did was I basically plunged with a spade bit that I ground the spikes off of to get to get my hole I put a inch, one inch washer in I had to grind this one and this one because I wasn't happy with the the first spade bit I had and the, the second spade bit I had was an inch they were both an inch but this one must have been a little worn so I had to just shave a little on the side of the ring you can see here, I touch this with the grinder, and I touch this with the grinder. I didn't want to thin the fiberglass so much that um, uh, that I would I would sacrifice it. Yeah, it's it's panel bonded all the way on. I just want a mechanical um, uh, attachment also. So then I'll come back now and I'll I'll slot these. I'll make that area a little bit bigger in the fiberglass uh, th uh, through the uh, gel coat. And then I'll I'll lay in some cloth on it just to show you what I did. So this is a spade bit. So typically there's a spike on each side, which of course would cut a ring deeper than I wanted. So I just took it, you know, an old spade bit in a on my grinder and, and chopped them down. But looking at this, yeah, this is something I used in the past. <laughs> I made probably a 15 16 or something like that out of it. So, whatever. Uh, coat of self etching primer, two coats of black, and uh, fully welded. And that's the first fender bracket. First thing I did this morning when I come out, and it's morning, it's about what, quarter to eight right now. First thing I did when I got in was to get this side mocked up, tack welded on, and get that bonded, because that's all I have. I had to make make those. <laughs> so, so got that on, got my angle finder on, got everything plumb and level. Um, distance from the frame, I actually had a wooden block in there. Um, it happens to be um, three and seven eighths, was a distance to the frame on the other side. So I took a wooden block with shims, got three and seven eighths before I tacked it all up. Once I tacked it all up, I bumped it, it fell out. I could slip it, just slip it into the edge. So I'm dead on. So now it's time to start fabricating the wings on the headlight mounts. So now I need to carry this over. And I don't know if I'm gonna carry it forward or I don't want it close to the tire, so I might actually carry this forward some. So that's the next phase of, phase of fab is to get the rest of the, this fender wing held, or uh, front fender held up. So, so that's where we're at from there. Then the radiator. You can see this strap has fallen off because he fell too many times. We can see that. The radiator is pushed forward almost three quarters of an inch. Um, this will be the last phase is where I tie this in by building, I keep calling it a radiator, the grill shell, where I tie in the radiator mount, put the radiator in, but once the fenders are mounted on both sides, I should be able to unbolt and pop that guy out of there and with a lot of, lot of different marks and measures. To make sure I know where where it is uh, when I put that in where where it's going to be so making progress moving along when I do get to the point of taking the fenders off again I will mark that relief so I have adequate clearance and document uh, a, uh, a plan to fiberglass the the inside of those um, to, to, for the sections that I cut out to fiberglass the inside down where I have enough distance from the headers so it's going along going along really well here we are again um, the front fender mount now the rears are on I'm bonding um, everything's jigged in the right location. This side, I've got the holes made. 
Um, uh, I got the front fender brace out and that caused a little bit of upward spring. It's probably hard to tell, but this jack was about a quarter of an inch away and, and she pulled up a little bit. And that's, actually I can push it back down. There, I <laughs> push it back down. So we're addressing, we're addressing this now. Okay, so I cut those off of the original fenders. I don't even know specifically what the original fender shape was, but I know um, what they look like in pictures, and I know it was not as wide as the 33 and all that. So these stand uh, straight up. I modified these, both of these, uh, some time ago. There might even be a video on it. Uh, tightened up the corner on it when I mocked up the fenders, okay? And then when I, in a much more recent video, I mounted them to this to find those holes in the frame to get it clocked and touching and all that kind of thing. So now I need to take care of the rest of this span. And so I have the pieces that I cut off, okay? I have those and I'm putting them on. right here so this is these are the pieces that I took off and I'm cleaning them up I might throw them in some muratic uh, when I'm done with the, the entire assembly I will throw them in muratic when I'm done with the entire assembly but I had to take up the gap so what I did was I I drilled holes in these and I spaced them in from the, the fender just a little bit so I can bond on a fastener and all that kind of a thing. Same old, same old. And ran this up against the curve of the fender. And the distance, I marked a point on there. This is the passenger side. I marked, uh, or this is the driver's side. Um, and this is the wrong side. Driver's side front driver's side front. So this will come into here at some point and you see that little S that's going to drop down onto the, the brace that's already on the fender. Okay, I identified that location and I began making pieces. I started out making four, just plasma cut them out and ground them down to this shape, down to the shape of the cardboard with exception to that little flare. Okay? With exception to that little flare. I'll do that, I'll fin hand finish that when I finish the uh, material. Then I made one side, which I'm going to show you here now, I think. And I, this was mounted, this was clamped, grabbed just an old piece of angle iron tack welded him on four spots always brought it over to the vise tack welded a piece of just waste on four spots didn't matter if they're close you know if I had to you know, one I had to build up to get close the gap and then welded my first piece on and you can see we can see that that's way up over this edge here way up over this edge I'm just tack welded on and I put a little bend in them to get around that corner. Okay? And now I'm making, or pardon me, let me, go, let me step back just a moment, set this down. I don't want to break my tacks and start the grinder here. Okay. So then I copied that to another piece with the exact same bend. I could sit it on the table, right? Line one piece up, this is the rear. Line the other piece up, make sure the fronts touch it, make sure everything is symmetrical. And now I'm making the rear. Let me get this out of here again. The rear of the bracket. So now this guy will have to go on. And he sets on top nice and flush. I think I'm going to go all the way to this edge. That's what I was doing. All the way to this edge. I'll cut this edge. I'll V the groove, I'll weld it, but I'm going to take a, 
um, a square and make sure I'm touching both sides. I stayed down. I'm about half a material thickness there. I wanted a full material thickness. This, you can see a hint of the mark right here and the right there. So now I'm down. A material thickness there so that this isn't the top but when I put a top on I can weld it and get a full full tight weld okay and I will put that little notch in here I don't know what it's going to look like but that was this notch and that just is because the the uh, headlight mount kind of rolls up and down and I'll just roll back up when I finish this out but um, this is all 11 gauge. I'm using 10 gauge. I'm close to the thickness, as close as I can get, but I'm welding, you know, welding it all together. Now, these sat flush when I stuck the magnet on, flush. Got my V in there. Um, and this I set flush, but this was up a little bit because of the angle of this. So after I got my three tacks on, vice gripped it down flush. So she's got a little bit of twist in her um, that, that that is necessary for, for the assembly. So I'll proceed on this side. Then I should have enough structure to mock it up. Another important thing about tacking. There's what's left of the angle iron there and there because I cut the other two off because they were on this piece and that's the whole thing is when you're doing stuff like this you got to think about how am I going to hold it in its position until it's it's finished and then when you are finished am I going to be able to access those to cut them off <laughs> so in this case of course you can see that I can access them I could have put another tack right there um and, and it, it, when you're tacking up under the, the underside of a car and that, you know, with all the suspension or other things that may be in the way, sometimes it's hard to get at what you can get at. Sometimes you got to put, um, don't just do two, do three or four tacks. I like four tacks. Take it off. Once you get it over to the bench, you can always slap another one on at an accessible point. Now that I got this on, this is pretty rigid at this point and I can, I can finish it up. But they're certainly going to be substantially different than the than the originals. Now I'm using the 19 from the 1931 Plymouth chassis that I have under here. That's what I have. I'm using that uh, to make the 1933 fender brackets. So that's kind of why you can't just go out and buy them. A lot of these things when you're doing this kind of custom stuff. So we'll keep plugging away on them. I'll show you what they look like here when I when I get to it. Well, I got uh, the first one done. I just, just right now finished a coat of um, rust reformer. And I completely forgot, hey, I got to shoot this. So I'll try to get the second one, but you can see those are the two pieces. I, I sanded down the sides. I don't want to touch it. I'm sorry. I didn't get more vid. And I'm not going to go in and grind the corners. I mean, you know, I could. Veed it out. Got 100% penetration. Came on the backside and used a, a burr. Everything's still set in here. To V out. If I saw spots where I didn't see weld come through, I veed it out until I got to the bottom of the crack with that burr and um, and then hit it with weld again. Sanded it with various flappers, you know, cut off wheel to get into areas where you can't get, you know, on the interior side. That's one of the reasons why I can't get up in there. I could sit there with a burr and, um, and a, uh, you know, a finger a sander all day long. Uh, but I'll do that on, on body parts that I'm showing. And then these things, these these wafers, man, I just took that after that. Of course, there was so much grinding 
anyway that I had a small section up here and a small section down here and I just took that that uh, Brillo pad and hit the inside and the outside so I'm not gonna obviously at this point I'm not gonna soak it in uh, in acid uh, to clean it off although that does work good um, I don't know I have a sense of urgency I don't know I don't know what to tell you anyway um the profile works good. It's going to follow the fender. Um, and now for number two. Here I have a nice uh, uh, profile that I can set it up to. Obviously, they're not symmetrical. But if I slide them up, I should be able to look at several points. But I'll fab it on the car. I'll use this guy as reference um, when I'm doing it. And... Um, God, you can see, even see the twist in it, how that twists with the fender. That's really, really, really cool. But, you know, I followed the shape of the fender. And this is pointing not, not straight over the fender, but a little bit forward over the fender because I want clearance for the tires. So it worked out very well. I'm very proud of it. And uh, now it's time to uh, do the other side. So uh, if I re remember to get shots, I get in the groove and I forget i apologize for that but if i remember to get shots of this one i will so we've got the first one sitting here my bench is a steel bench it's flat we're touching and basically now what i did was i went up underneath the car when i built this one i didn't have the sides fabricated i didn't have any of these pieces fabricated and so I had to find where I was going with that guy. So now I stuck this one up in the fender, measured my fender height, <clears throat> all my dims to make sure that I was symmetrical from side to side. And I just tack welded these two pieces on because I got to cut them and they got to be welded in and trimmed up and all that. Then after I got it up out, then I tacked four spots on this piece of waste that was sitting on the bench. <clears throat> As we can see, we have, we have good symmetry. All the way around it. Now I can grab something like this is my bench and I can lay it across where I can get a high side and see this has got a clock just a little bit like that and you can't and this is a little low here and that kind of a thing and I can run down it until I get them exactly the same. So that's the game plan. That's the game plan now. And they don't have to be precisely the same, you know, because there's adjustment in here and all that kind of thing. But I want them to be uh, as close as possible so that any modification or adjustment, and I can see here that I, anyway, I can take a straight edge and run it across the table, uh, which I have to now, uh, here it is, as an example, I can make a line on here, okay, I can make a line go in the same dimension, come over to the factory stamping, make a mark on my table, do the same thing over here, make a mark on the table, and continue going on I can tell you right now though even there are there is even some various see how that clocks out and this one doesn't as much there is some variation in in how they trim the stamping this has a low relief there this one has a little bit more gentle where's that at see how that cuts up 
right in here and then comes down where this one goes flat so then I gotta instead of doing that I gotta find a more robust point on it like the center line of these and that kind of stuff so that's what I, I'll do and I'll just tweak this guy just a little bit so it's a perfect match to that but there's the start I'll make a few adjustments and run another quick video okay got her mocked up um, or tacked up sorry tacked up and it's mirror image checked about 47 times just uh, stuck it under the car you know to bolt it up check for bolt alignment and everything seems to be dialed in pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and finish welding it up and make it look like the other one only a mirror image okay similar to the other one I still have to cut a little bit of excess off trim it out but she's welded completely around both sides sides V'd out and um, this took this whole thing here because I cut all these pieces in pairs when I did the first one the first one took me about four hours and the second one took me oh it'll be about an hour and five minutes so now of course I have to finish this out grind it and all that stuff but now I officially have in this sucker's hot I just finished welding it but I'll, uh, I'll kiss the two ends together and uh, you can't tell but I have two fender front fender mounts I have my rear fender mounts and now ra radiator mount these cuts radiator mount but as soon as everything's fixed the height is the same on both sides everything's adjusted then I'm going to start on that radiator mount um, and everything will have some form of adjustment of course you know for fine tuning but almost there guys thanks for watching all right it's the next morning for me um pulled off the uh running board bra bracket for the driver's side now because the epoxy was cured um painted the driver's side fender bracket oh no painted the primer on the passenger side bracket and primed the driver's side bracket that's the primer I'm using just rust reformer and then I hit it with black, black paint <coughs> Don't put a extreme emphasis anyway on uh, on the underside of the car because this is a driver. It's not. I'm not taking it to a show, you know. Otherwise, I'd be grinding all the welds and all that kind of thing. <clears throat> so, so those are done. We got the rivet sunk in on this side little bit of grinding to flush out you know make sure I'm below the surface slightly and just bonded those right now put them on the the next step is of course as I said about a thousand times I need to work on the radiator and radiator support grill support Get the grill spacing correct, get that strut on, and then tear it all apart and build the build the inner fenders in glass. 
start glassing everything, glassing those holes shut, glassing the bottom um, of that strap, um, and finishing it all that all out. Uh, I think you saw the bottom here. I'll just grab this light. I think you saw the bottom at one point, but basically there's the rivets. So I pull the barrel up, right? And a rivet, you know, you pull up that nail head pulls up through the barrel, but the, the, you know, you don't, these aren't exactly all, I got half inch rivets. They're not all exactly a half an inch deep, you know, it's fiberglass. So what I do is I come back and I grind to the, right till I touch the head of the, the nail. So I'm not losing any retention strength because I'm just taking that wasted barrel uh, out, out of it. And that's again why these standoffs, 125 thou standoff on a measured, uh, what was it? it was under 190 some thou uh, nail head that I'm pulling through plus the thickness of the material. So I just lay a straight edge across here and make sure I'm not touching them. And then I'll pull my fiberglass strips, you know, across all this, keeping them, making sure the the cloth is underneath this. You know, I want to grind it, but I don't ever want to grind through the cloth. Of course, I want the cloth to give some retention. And so I'll get all that bonded onto there, and that'll support it from the bottom. You can see, you can see the panel bond that's on there. It might be a little bit of overkill, sure. But cut, coating this whole piece of metal in gel coat, and then when I undercoat the the fiberglass fender, but uh, it'll keep it from rusting. You know, don't want any pinholes to rust that guy out. And of course, on the top, then um, I'll open these up just a little bit, with a little bit of depth, and I get a layer of mat uh, or cloth rather on each one of those, and that'll you know keep from. The fiberglass from cracking because of course those are weak areas now so I'll build that that back up so that's that's the uh, that extent of the project um, from there again I won't restate it for the 47th time so at this point I'm in I'm on the the way to four for curing and I got to start thinking about if there's something else I can do to fill the time uh, on the car otherwise I got to get some work done other work done thanks guys mm -hmm.